Yes, Honorable Mayor and Council, thank you very much. I have a few items here. Uh, the first I wanted to tackle, and I didn't want to interrupt Anthony, he was on the roll, but as it relates to the uh, roundabout, as you know, whenever you have projects of this nature, there's going to be some type of disruption to some of our businesses. So we're trying to do everything we can to try to accommodate them and 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 do um, you know bend backwards as much as we can so, so that their uh, flow of their customers and and um, delivery and so forth um, tries you know goes smoothly. So we've been doing that. However, there is um, at least one business owner in that neck of the woods that has approached me and has said that you know they've been uh, losing somewhere between three and four hundred dollars a day. So uh, we're having conversations with them and again trying to figure out ways to assist um, in rerouting traffic and using the alleys and putting up signs letting everybody know that they're open for business, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's number one. Number two, um, just to piggyback a little bit as it relates to what Randy was saying, uh, we had a meeting uh, uh, the other Friday with the Strategic Growth Council. Uh, the Strategic Growth Council is an entity from the state, and we we invited them out. They came out, and basically they have funds, and these funds, um, if we can get their attention and they like the project, uh, we can really do some projects in some areas as it relates to housing uh, that would otherwise be a little more difficult to do because of infrastructure needs. So. Uh, we met on site with uh, Mr. Gallo. We've been looking at the 35 acres that's right there on B Street in between Rancho San Miguel and La Casitas del Sol. And actually, uh, I brought in a couple of uh, housing um, developers, and one has actually already signed uh, an option with the Gallos, and they're looking at about a five-acre site in that neck of the woods. And so what we would really like is to be able to master plan that entire area and bring in some other development, housing development, and some mixed use. So that's something that we're working on. There's there's quite a bit of, I believe that there should be quite a bit of money available. And we're gonna take advantage of uh, SB2 uh, money so that we can hire uh, you know, consultants specifically to help us master plan everything and, and uh, bring a project forward for council and the planning commission to look at. Um, in addition to that, um, I had an opportunity to go up and meet with the governor's cabinet uh, this past Friday. As you might recall, we've been talking about electric aviation and how we here in the Central Valley can uh, benefit from it, and then also the city of Livingston. And so there's, it's a win-win for, win -win for everybody because those who don't have airports, they can still partake in the training and possibly some spinoffs from... Uh, you know, if that industry gets uh, gets going in in the Central Valley, which it already has, and uh, we specifically asked for a working group, and so uh, they were pretty excited. So I anticipate this um, having feet and, and going. La uh, the next item I have is uh, related to the AAA uh, truck wash. That's a 12-acre site that was purchased on the on the Winton Parkway area. Uh, they're looking at having food grade truck washing, uh, a truck sales component, and also a truck repair element. And they submitted their plans, and so we have them, and we're moving forward with that. Uh, the other item is, we, we, as you all know, we applied for this round of Prop 68 grant funding, which we'll know sometime in, uh, in December whether or not we got the money uh, for our project. But there will be another round, so we're already starting to think about where and what and how we can use these funding. And we're planning to make a little trip up to Sacramento uh, to meet with some of these uh, 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 program managers. Uh, also, we're working on uh, trying to get enticed Dos Palos, City Dos Palos, so that we can do their dispatching and um, make a little money for our coffers and help a, a, a city in need. So we're working on that. Uh, also, uh, what this relates to, the supervisor was talking about the library. Um, one of the things that kind of came to mind is trying to incorporate the, uh, the library, possibly, um, in this master plan that we're talking about and make it a very attractive uh, library 
who knows, maybe even incorporate a coffee element, and, you know, I don't know. But uh, that's kind of the thinking, so we'll chat some more about that. Uh, and uh, because that building there does need more than the facelift. <laughs> okay, and then uh, lastly, um, Emerald Textile Services, which is the, the firm that we were able to recruit who's uh, going to be processing um, hospital linen here in town and who's hiring more than 250 people, uh, they've, they've had to move the date, their start date, from October 1st to October or to September 24th, as Anthony said. And um, one, of the, one of the issues that they're currently having is um, they need pg e to install a meter so they can use, they can fire up their, their uh, equipment. And, um, and so they, pg e mentioned that it wasn't going to be until, you know, sometime later next week or after the first or right before the first of October. So um, uh, staff is participating here, and, and, and I made contact with uh, some friends who work for pg e in D.C., uh, and um, we're trying to see if we can help them so that they can meet their new startup date. So that's all I have, Council, unless you have any questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the city manager? If not, we'll move on to council members and